Oh, hi. It's your favorite Marmot. And I wanted to let you know about this project. This is something that I have been working on for a very long time. When I first moved up here back in October, it was unexpected. I came up to spend a weekend with mom because she was in the hospital. What I didn't know at the time was that I wasn't going to come back. So this project is something that I originally started planning for back in October. And I've only this year gotten to be able to work on it. This has taken more than a few days. And I've been working out in the backyard, well, on the back patio, to try and get this thing done. This is a spice rack. And I know it doesn't seem like much. This is kind of like a shop project that you do in school. But I wanted to make this because I like spices. I like cooking. And the kitchen down in the basement has no real storage for spices or anything other than in the cabinets. And it's really difficult because I like my spices. And during the winter, I've made a lot of soups and various other accoutrement that I like to add spices to because spice is flavor and it's pretty yummy. So I got some oak. This is uh, just Home Depot oak trim. These are one by four inch pieces. The bottom part is a one by six, which is three quarters of an inch. Of course, no video would be complete without footage of the dogs. They were very insistent on both being healthy and making sure that I wasn't working too hard because we needed to go outside and play a lot. They love the frisbee and they love the snow and they just have the best time out there. But they make sure that I get out and do things that are not working. It's been difficult to get time because I've been working full time from here. Uh, it's been a really difficult project for a while, but this enabled me to have something that wasn't under the same time pressure as the work job. And it let me, well, it let me buy some new tools for one, but this is a router table. I really like router tables. If I had my druthers, I would have one that was dedicated. Realistically, I have a router back home that I can use for just regular, it's a plunge router, so it's more suited for working on wood loosely. This is a non-plunge router. It's an adjustable depth router, which is really, really good for a router table. It's also got a half inch shank which makes for some really sturdy router bits. This is the aspect of try it on some scrap pieces to see how you like it. Trying to adjust the depth of the cut and get this all set up right so that it would make the router cuts the way that I wanted them in there to keep it straight and so that I could mount this rail on the inside. This is the first time that I really got it successfully to the way that I wanted it. And I had the scrap piece and was able to get it so that it fit just perfectly in there. Slightly less than three quarters of an inch. So once that was tested, I started cutting the routes in the sides. I had originally looked at trying to make shelves that weren't adjustable, but when I was shopping at the hardware store, I realized that they had these um, adjustable bracket pieces. And I thought, wow, that's a really good idea because that way I can use different size spice jars as I want to. And whoever else is going to end up using this in the end can do whatever they want to with it. They can adjust the shelves to fit their own spice jars. 
This was incredibly satisfying to finally get done. Perfect depth on those. I was so happy. These were, oh, <laughs> yes, I had a three quarter inch mortise bit here. And the first time I used it, it exploded and broke off the carbide pieces. Not a big fan. That's a Milwaukee part, by the way. So I replaced that with a three quarter inch straight cut. And I'm trying to make some cuts in here that don't go all the way through because I want to fit the two by four pieces into the two by six pieces. And uh, it turns out to be really difficult to do these cuts the short way, or I, I don't know, the long way, so that it's facing 90 degrees. This was incredibly difficult to do. And, uh, well, frankly, I screwed it up a couple times. I'll show you that in just a bit. But this is also trying to make a back cut, which is in the wrong direction for the table. And you see that little bobble there. Yeah, that was a mistake. Trying to maintain that edge. You can see that first one there was abysmal. Now I'm trying to square off the front. I'm trying to make it so that the boards will fit in flush. So just taking a wood chisel and squaring that edge. It's a little tedious process, but again, kind of satisfying. Using my knee for a workbench is probably not the best idea in the world, but considering what I have to work with up here, or at least what I had at the time, it was pretty much the only thing I could do. This project pretty much got me to get a workbench. So I have one workbench put together. I have a couple more that I need to assemble, but that will be coming up later. I don't need them immediately, and I have some more pressing things that I need to do. I like working with wood. There's something about wood that I really like. There's a character to it. I like working with steel, too. And, I, you know, aluminum. I wish I could weld aluminum. I don't have a TIG welder, and I don't have training on a TIG welder. I'm just a total novice at welding, even with a, just a regular MIG welder. These were fun. I had to get a couple of them to get the right size, but uh, trying to measure these and fit them in the slots was, I thought, a kind of a brilliant idea because, of course, the Dremel was really good for cutting through these. They're, I don't know if they're real mild steel or if they're thick aluminum. Always wear protection, but they, I think they're steel, but it's really, really soft steel. I first got these at the hardware store, put them in the back of the car with the dogs, and the dogs just bent them all to heck. So it was tough trying to get that in place. But they have these nice little screw holes, and I got some wood screws for them that are just long enough to fit in and seal them down without going through the back. A little difficult to get them in because they were so small and I had to pre-drill pilot holes because oak is a hard wood. If I were to try and screw these directly into the wood, the screws would break. They, they did break a couple of times. <sighs> so, you know, brass screws are not as strong as steel, but it looks so pretty. And I had to drill extra holes in the ends to, like I said, they got bent. So I was trying to drill these in to get, get the end pieces so that they would actually stay. It was pain in the butt, but, you know, still worked pretty well. And of course, pre-drilling pilot holes for the joints. I made these lap joints 
because you know with the router table you can make lap joints really easy and i didn't have the confidence to do 45 degree angle joints i have yet to make those work i need a good saw for that and right now i am not in the place to have that up here again pre-drilling holes because this is the bottom and i want to make sure that the screws are mounted in the correct place so just pre-drilling to make sure that everything goes smoothly this is just a dry fit and yeah pardon the mess this is kind of where i'm living right now most of those boxes are empty i'm keeping them for uh, storage of things that are going to need to be shipped or moved and in general things that might actually get donated or put somewhere where they are not going to be available putting countersink holes in and then test fitting the screws the holes that i pre-drilled in here were just a little bit too uh, too small and of course the countersink holes weren't quite big enough so i went all the way with the quarter inch countersink and that fit just about perfectly so these go in nice and flush at the end wood glue quality wood glue and now you see why i am wearing the gloves beautiful way to spread wood glue I also had these nice framing squares to be able to get 90 degree angles so that I could screw these together and get them so that they would be as square as possible as I could manage under the circumstances. Again, not having a good work table other than this little DeWalt folding plastic table, which works surprisingly well. I'm really glad that I got it. It is really quick to set up. It's literally like a couple seconds. It unfolds and drops in. Yeah, this is where one of the screws broke off because I was tightening it and I got it a little bit too tight and it just popped the, uh, no, sorry, that was the other side. It, it popped the screw. So I ended up having to cut a different, cut a different piece and use that. Putting this together, getting the basic frame together, this was taking forever. I mean, I think I've been working on this project off and on for, I don't know, a month and a half now. But I got it together. Mounted the bottom piece on. I had to drill a couple of bigger holes to get the screws through, which was the right choice because they went together really well. And then going through with a wet rag and cleaning off all of the glue bits that are there. Then of course taking the measurement, which is a real nice 28 inches at the top and 28 and 3 16 inches at the bottom. My error. But I cut all the shelf pieces to the same 28 inch length because I wanted to make sure that they would fit no matter where they went and 3 16 is not bad for these shelves. This is just trimming them to make sure that they are all same length, nice and flush. And then I put this back piece on, held it in place, scored it, and cut it with the jigsaw. That way it was designed perfectly to fit the back. Using these crown staples to go in and the basic frame is done, other than, yeah, I missed the cut a little bit. So, router table to the rescue. I'll take the edge down with the router table. That little uh, bearing on the top presses against the wood shelf so that it will cut flush and have that nice trim edge. So mounting it to the wall was an interesting thing. I wanted to make sure that it was fitting properly and it fit exactly the way that I wanted it to. Using a stud finder to locate the studs in the wall. This actually turned out to be a really handy tool. 
quite nice. It's got, see that LED that comes on? There's a, there's a centering gauge so that it centers on the stud. It does a really nice job of getting it in the middle. Measuring and drilling the mounting holes. Trying to get it up so that it's pressed against the cabinets that are there. Used some of the three quarter inch styrofoam. Drilled, well, drilled some pilot holes into the two by fours using the template of the screws there. Getting it into place, shoved up against the back and then screw it into the wall. This felt so good to get this attached because this meant that it was basically done. Spice jars. I want to use a couple different kinds of spice jars. Actually, I want to use one kind of spice jar eventually, but there are some spices that I use a lot of. Salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, that I want to have larger quantities of. You know, and I've got a couple of couple of grain sizes, couple of grind sizes of, of pepper. So I've got, you know, like a coarse grind and a medium grind and all that. And then I want to use these little half, half pint jars. These are decorative and they look kind of pretty and they can hold the rest of the spices in there as much as I want. I don't remember exactly how many fit across. I, it's, I think, 21 or 22. And there's the finished product. It ended up looking really nice other than a few mistakes but it was good to get it done i'll have more stuff coming up but this is special and i wanted to share with you guys so see you later